tragic event in which churchgoers were shot by Oromia security forces inside a church. Orthodox priests slapped in public by Oromo police. Tear gas was deployed against elderly churchgoers attending a mass at St. George Church. Blatantly disparaging and hurling offensive insults at the church. Since Abi took office, there has been a noticeable surge in prosecution, mass killings, church destruction, and the deliberate targeting of Orthodox Christians. Notably, Abi Ahmed's native region, Oromia, has imposed severe restrictions on religious practice, including public humiliation of priests, in addition to intensified prosecution. These alarming trends have seemingly been officially incorporated into the government's policies, instilling fear among many Orthodox Christians. In the year 2022, a number of prosperity gospel preachers delivered sermons that targeting the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which stands as one of the oldest churches in the world. Among these preachers, Pastor Jonathan in particular had previously received both a public donation of 25,000 euros and a gold medal from Abi Ahmed. His sermon would later gain significant attention. During the sermon, the preacher delivered a revelation to his congregation, declaring, Last night I had a vision, and in that vision, Jesus himself showed me a powerful symbol, a massive stone being cleaved in half. In this vision, Jesus conveyed to me that this symbol represented the emergence of numerous distinct entities and the dissolution of their teachings. Their association will be divided into two, and their union will be split into two separate entities. Their languages will intermix, and a dividing spirit will come between them. Behind the scenes, it became evident that Abi Ahmed and his Oromo political base in power had meticulously crafted their strategy over several months dividing the church along ethnic lines. Ethiopia's Orthodox Tewahedo Church is one of the largest and oldest in Africa, but a split within its ranks last month led to weeks of unrest, divisions, and restrictions for social media users. And the fallout could still have ramifications for the church itself and the country. The crisis began when a group of rebel bishops created their own assembly in Oromaya region. A set of Oromo archbishops and bishops who, who broke away from the Orthodox Church. And then the Oromo regional government was actually um, helping those breakaway bishops essentially uh, take over the, the, the Orthodox Church and, and, and put their people in, in place. Violent protests followed between supporters on both sides and security forces. Ethiopians on Sunday condemned Prime Minister Abia. The plan to divide and weaken the church is a multifaceted strategy. Its objectives include empowering aggressive Oromo politicians with significant influence and expanding the followership of prosperity gospel adherents. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church has historically played a vital role in fostering unity within a nation renowned for its diverse communities and ethnic groups. Nonetheless, this unifying influence has made it a prime target for Oromo nationalist and religious extremist factions, viewing the Church's substantial power and sway as an obstacle to their aim of establishing an independent Oromia or Oromo hegemonic system. AB's public endorsement of a breakaway Oromo faction has garnered him backing from his political constituency. With a rich history spanning more than 1,700 years and extensive resources, dividing the church along ethnic lines enables a select few groups to openly lay claim to its property and land holdings, making it easier for them to legally acquire and exploit these assets. 
The sense of entitlement driven by a desire for hegemony has led certain individuals to assume power solely based on their belief in their capability to do so. Abi Ahmed is a strong proponent of prosperity gospel. Advocates of prosperity, gospel teachings perceive the deeply rooted Ethiopian Orthodox Church as a potential threat and weakening its influence is likely to attract a significant number of followers to their movement. Abiy Ahmed openly endorsed Oromo priests and issued stern warnings against anyone opposing this decision, invoking a level of violence previously unprecedented in Ethiopian history. However, the Orthodox Christians continued to march on, unyielding in their resolve. Abiy attempted to defuse the situation, but it's clear he's likely strike again. Instead of overtly, it seems they are systematically dismantling the church on a daily basis.